and welcome to SciShow Tangents, the frightfully competitive science knowledge scream case. I'm your ghost, Hank Gangrene, and joining me this week, as always, is mad scientist, Scary Riley. <laughs> and our resident every wolfman, Sam Skulls. I want to learn some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, we here at SciShow Tangents just love getting to the Halloween spirit. And this year is no different. October has been Trick or Treat Month, and Sam and Sari have invited some ghoulish guests over to Tangents Manor to join us this month. In fact, <laughs> I hear one of them approaching the door now. Knock, knock, knock. Who is it? <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Hi, it's me, Alexis Nicole Nelson. It's botanist, cook, and forager, and genius behind the TikTok account, Black Forager. It's Alexis Nicole Nelson! Woo. Hi, it's spooky in here. Well, yeah, it was spooky, and then it got very high. <laughs> and then it got up. really jubilant, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis Nicole Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> Did, did they cast you to make the, the target toys that make the noises when you walk past them? Yeah, how did you know? Things. Oh, God, it's a good gig, I bet. I've always <laughs> wondered how you get to do that, because I would love to be the big skeleton that's like, hey, everybody, uh, I'm a skeleton. <laughs> yeah, he talks for a long time. <laughs> you know, I've... N- I've never seen the one that just goes, hey, guys, I'm a skeleton, but I'd want to buy that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I have a question that I desperately need to ask all of you. If you had a little uh, toy plushie that was you, what would it say if I squeezed its hand or belly? I don't know where this button is. <laughs> I feel like maybe. Where would you squeeze it and what would it say? <laughs> yeah. Sari, you just squeeze the whole head. Yeah. Fuck. I feel like. I just don't know. I feel like Sari would. One of the sounds would be like, oh, like a Marge Simpson, like a sad Marge Simpson sound. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Sam would say, Sari? What would Sam say? Be careful. I'll be I'll get her feelings. I know. <laughs> I feel like you would say the thing that you do the that's most like iconic is oh, correcting Lord. people, me specifically, my knowledge of comic book char- characters or things. Oh, like interesting. That. <laughs> so it'd be like you know, <laughs> you know the real Wolverine is. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. I'm like there oh. are 27 Spider Man. There's way more than 27 Spider Man. 27 Spider Man. <laughs> there's thousands of Spider Man. That would be the sound bit. There it is. <laughs> it's you got the sound bite. Spider Man. I'd have to be. I'd have to be like AI or something where I could hear yeah. the thing that you were saying that was wrong and be like, eh, I, yeah. sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, How about you? What? What? Alexis, what would yours be? I feel like if you if you squeezed my hand and like pointed my stuffed animal at something, I'd be like, <gasps> you can eat that. Or be like, no, <laughs> don't eat that. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> uh-huh. If you could like hook it up to iNaturalist or something. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I would buy that and I just like pointed at things in the yard. Be like, this is a berry. <laughs> don't eat that. Don't eat that. <laughs> Also in the yeah. same vein, Hank, I know that I was not asked to choose yours, but the first thing I think of when I think of you is that yeah. specific soundbite of you screaming, don't eat grass, don't eat grass. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really made a moment for myself there, didn't I? Uh, yeah. So you could tell people whether or not to eat stuff. And I tell people to not eat one specific, one specific thing. One specific thing. Sure. But also, I have to say, I desperately want to do this and to have little plushies of us and what they actually do is play a whole episode of tangents oh, that would be so hit cool. all their hands at the same time and then like each one does it but if you get it a little bit off it's like broken and you like have to wait the whole hour oh, for it yeah to oh, okay mm-hmm. or you could just squeeze one in it you could have a talk you could talk to them and pretend like you were part of the show yeah pretend like you're on the podcast oh. too. Yeah. and yeah. it would just be me going oh uh-huh those would be amazing when they get to like the dying batteries furby under your bed (laughs) stage (laughs) i didn't think this was gonna be such a good idea (laughs) looking forward to all the plushies we're gonna make you guys every week here on tangents we get together to try to unnerve i forgot that it was creepy unnerve disgust and horrify (laughs) each other with science facts 
while trying to stay on topic. Our panelists are playing for gory and for candy, which we will be awarding as we play. And at the end of the episode, one of us clowns will be crowned the king of Halloween. Now, as always, we introduce this week's topic of the traditional science poem this week from Alexis. It's not just a toy that the youths love. What we dump on stars at Kids' Choice Awards. <laughs> it's also a short story by Chekhov. That's true. Oh. The goop from seaweeds found in seas or fjords. Sometimes a rubber polymer that flubs. Made with borax and also PVA. Sometimes it's left behind in trails by slugs. To lessen friction as they crawl away. There's slime molds which aren't fungi but protists. They oh. decompose things like a champ, you know. <laughs> a lot of tasks this gloopy stuff permits. The fishies even wear it as a coat. You've likely figured it out by this time. My wibbly wobbly subject here is slime. <laughs> There's so many facts in there. So many real, real sciencey things. Yeah. 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 Hopefully you didn't ruin the whole rest of the episode. The I know. I, yeah, I did not run. think about that until yeah. like 10 minutes I before. <laughs> the topic of the day is slime, which it definitely does not have a definition. Yeah, it's one there where I got to try my best. It's like it's like what you think of when you hear slime. When yeah. you hear slime. Yeah. So like yeah. anything like viscous and watery and sticky mm -hmm. and slippery mm -hmm. at the intersection of all those adjectives. Sometimes it's made by living things. So like animals or plants or bacteria or protists. Or the decay of those things. So when a living thing dies, then it kind of becomes slimy and goopy. But then also there are synthetic slimes, whether it's, I guess the, the Nickelodeon slime is organic, isn't it? Like oat, oats and, and food dye and stuff like that. You could say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Not naturally occurring, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the slime forests and harvest from the slime trees. <laughs> but, but there are like synthetic slimes as well like the i don't know lubricants that plumbers use or like orbeez the sodium polyacrylate like blobby balls and gels that absorb a lot of water that people use for absorbency for fun or for practical uses like those are slimy too i think that's a bit of a stretch but okay okay well what do you think <laughs> Where, where's yeah. the line between slime and not slime uh oh i guess that's more of a blob yeah you can't spread an Orby. That's you more of a blob than a slime. Yeah. It's just, it's just like a Jello ball. Jello's mm. not slime. They but are. It, it becomes sl slime eventually. They are slimy, but they're not slime. I do think they checked all of the adjective Shoot. boxes. <laughs> okay, okay, you're right. Sorry, <laughs> Sadie. <laughs> No, that's, is it spreadable? Is it like it can't be a solid I, object? I think it mm. has to, yeah. I think it can't be a solid. If, if I put on chapstick, is it slime? I think it's slimy. I think it's slimy. And if it's slimy, then what's keeping it from being slime? I feel like once Great you point. hit the adjective, then you're the noun automatically. Is, yeah. Right? <laughs> that's how, that, that's definitely not. If you're dusty, then you're dust. You're if dust. You're, <laughs> that's it. Automatically. Yeah, that's how it works. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, so the, the, like, the closest, I think, more scientific word, which is one of our original episodes, uh, like the eleventh episode we ever did was mucus, but I think like slime and mucus they overlap. But I think it's kind of a, a rectangle square situation. Sure, I would yeah. argue where all mucus is slime. So you've got like mucus is just like water and macromolecules, especially mucins, which are mm -hmm. the, the type of glycoproteins, like the sugary proteins. And and mucus is secreted, and it's goopy and and viscous and sticky and slippery. But not all slime is mucus, I would think. I think you can like have, have slime that is non-mucus. But but yeah, usually right. when you talk about like animal slime or animals secreting slime, we're talking about mucus. Sari, do you know where the word slime came from? Yeah, it's it's been pretty consistent. It's it's old English. It was still slime. Oh, I guess slime is <laughs> like slime feels new because there's like Nickelodeon slime and there's like mm -hmm. toy slime, but slime's not new. We've been sneezing. 
We've been oh, yes, yes. oozing stuff from our bodies. Yeah, okay. We've yeah. been looking. Alexis knows more than anyone else. We've been looking at plants. Slime out there. There's oh, slime yeah. out there. There's slime yeah. out there. Alexis, can I can I eat that? <laughs> <laughs> Which slime? There's some slimy plants that you can eat. The slime from dock stems. You can eat that. The slime mm-hmm. from aloe. You can eat that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. definitely slime. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But like the goop in a jewel eat stem. Don't eat that. <laughs> so yeah i think we had to figure out what how to talk about that stuff so that you could say could you eat that could i eat this slime could i eat that (laughs) slime you needed a word for that i think it was slime and it was like very related to nature so the going back slightly further the latin word is limus which usually meant like mud or mire and the greek limni uh, meant marsh and so like goopy okay. places swamp were stuff. the origins of it. Like swamp, yeah, yeah swamps. Shrek. Yeah. Shrek and stuff. The Shrek. original source of slime. <laughs> Shrek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you <laughs> squeeze a I Shrek know. hard enough. <laughs> oh, for sure. Sari knows one thing about swamps. Uh, yeah. That's where, it's where Shrek that's comes Shrek from. Lives. I learned that as a kid <laughs> in my uh, yeah. <laughs> extracurricular activities. <laughs> <laughs> That's one that's one way to call that time you had fun once. <laughs> <laughs> that was mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're a very fun person. That's my little squeeze toy. I had fun one time. <laughs> I had fun once. Uh, okay. We're, so I feel like we're well defined and we know what we're talking about, except that not really, but like, were we ever? No. Which means that it's time to move on to the t- quiz portion of our show this week. We're going to be playing a little game called Truth or Fail. So slime is always inspiring us humans, whether we're playing with it in toy form or watching organisms make it in nature. And of course, the more we play with slime, the more we come up with more ways to use it in novel applications. Sometimes Mm. some very strange novel applications. The following are three stories of slime technology, but only one of them is true. And y'all have to figure out which one it is. So story number one, uh, one of the most pressing issues facing mankind is finding a way to make ice cream so that if it melts, it doesn't refreeze back into crystals. It Mm. refreezes back into ice cream instead. One ingredient that could help is okra slime. Scientists extracted the mucilaginous part of okra pods and added it to ice cream and found that it was able to serve as an ice cream stabilizer. But that might be a lie. It could be. Story number two, hagfish are not particularly beautiful creatures and their slime is super gross to look at and famously slimy. But scientists have been developing ways to convert that slime into something more beautiful, developing a process to dry out hagfish slime so that it solidifies. The structures within the slime crystallize and form synthetic gems that can be used to make hagfish slime jewelry. Whoa. That one might hmm. be a lie and it could be this one. Maze and Waxaka produces a mucus substance from their roots that makes them distinct from conventional corn. And scientists studying the role of this mucus substance in helping the corn grow found that it helps keep the roots actually warm. So they used that to create a lightweight insulation material that can be grown in fields. So is it the okra Mm. ice cream, hagfish jewelry, or corn insulation? I was watching Alexis all the time for the plant ones to see if your mm. if your face betrayed anything. I mean, mallows of which okra is one do be getting very slippy. You know, I always kind of thought that I just imagined that about okra. Like I, <laughs> I thought I thought that like okra. I was like okra feels very slimy to me, but people love it. They all love it, and so I'm like, I must be imagining this. Oh, I think okra is divisive. Oh, it's very divisive. Yeah. And I feel like I can't in good conscience tell anybody to try it for the first time anywhere other than the South or mm-hmm. in the kitchen yeah. of someone from the South. Yeah, yeah. I was raised by an Alabaman. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis, yeah. you said it was a mallow. Is it related to like Marshmal- marshmallow? Yeah. Yeah, they're in the same family, Malvaceae. Oh, yeah. oh. See, now, now for a moment there, you had me thinking that marshmallows came from plants. But marshmallows are a separate thing from marshmallows. 
Marshmallows are what the ancient Egyptians used to make the early predecessor to the confection now known as the marshmallow. Good. I, well, I'm just glad that marshmallows don't come from a plant. <laughs> they kind of do. Maybe well, they, really do. they come from corn and sugar plants. Yes. Yeah. Now, instead of mallow goop and honey, it is egg whites and high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love them. I love them. They're good. <laughs> but I so feel they, like... So okra is slimy. We agree. Mm-hmm. I feel like okra doesn't have a super... I might be wrong about this, but doesn't have a super overwhelming taste. So I could see this as being a good, a good thing. Like people... People, a person I know drinks okra water. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and yeah, she says okay. it's just it's just uh, thick and slippy. It doesn't really taste like anything. So oh, is that like good for the digestion or some stuff? Yeah, it's supposed to be like soothing for the digestive tract. Oh, theoretically, great. I don't think I could do that, even though I have a bad <laughs> digestive tract. No, I don't think I could either. That's up there yeah. with the people who drink like raw eggs. Well, no, thank slippy. you, please. Also slippy. Yeah. Also yeah. slippy yeah. and goopy in there. I don't think I need to be that lubricated. Down my <laughs> <way>. I just <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, there's mm. the okra one, and then there's that weird corn insulation one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that is not there something is. I've never heard of a plant, like the, a plant insulating its own roots like that, but oh, maybe. I know, maybe. Okay, you've never heard of it either, so that's... Uh, well, it's corn. A big lump with knobs. It's got mm. the juice, and maybe the slime. And maybe the slime. Yeah. I feel like the hagfish, we're usually looking for like the strength of the hagfish slime. Like There's sure. something about like how mm-hmm. those proteins polymerize, and they get really long, yeah. and they're strong, and... So like how how do we Spider also make silk, but from a fish yeah mm-hmm. yeah and so like that's the thing it took so much self control after you said long and strong to not say and trying to get the friction off <laughs> 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 but thank you for bringing it up though the hard work that you did. yeah you restrained yourself and then you let it fly and as then I let it fly anyway do yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of other stuff to make jewelry out of, though. I don't think we need hagfish jewelry. I don't think. Right. I feel like we have so many sources of not jewel jewelry. I really want it to be the corn roots. I just, Mm -hmm. I don't know if the polysaccharides in okra would stop water from forming crystals again when it (sighs) refreezes. And suddenly, I wish that I had taken more semesters of organic chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that it would have helped as a person yeah, who took I don't a number they, of those. They, they didn't cover in my semesters of organic chemistry. They didn't talk about okra once. So Boo. very boring. <laughs> but you said polysaccharides and that's what like frogs use as antifreeze. But that's free. Okay. I'm going to say okra ice cream. I'm also going to say okra ice cream, but, but not because Sari said it. I was already going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm so torn between the corn roots and the okra ice cream. Would corn need insulation in Oaxaca though? Would its roots need it? That's where it's from. Hmm. Would it need hmm. to develop that? Doesn't I just really talked myself point. off the ledge. I'm also going okra slime. <laughs> we have, I think maybe for the first time in Sasha <laughs> Tangent's history, a three-way win. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Woo! <Woo-hoo! laughs> Mm, 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 mm. So that tells us nothing. It's going to give us nothing. It's, <laughs> it's all down to all down to the next one. And Sari, I don't even know if there's a chance for Sari to get points, but we're going to find out after we take our short break. And then Sari will have another devious game for us. Sideshow Tangents is brought to you by Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. It's October, and you know what that means. Candy. Lots and lots of glorious Halloween candy. But humans can't live on candy alone, so once you've had your fill of ghost-shaped peanut butter cups and bone-flavored gummies, you better eat something wholesome and convenient, and that is where Factor comes in. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Factor can help you fuel up with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Did you spend the whole night carving pumpkins again, and now you got nothing healthy to eat for dinner? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and 
the chopping, the prepping, and the cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need, fresh, never frozen, and ready to eat in two minutes. And just because you're eating a normal dinner doesn't mean you can't be festive. Relish the best of autumn with fall flavors. Factors limited time only, hearty, comforting meals featuring seasonal fruits and veggies like cranberry pecan chicken and apple dijon pork chops need an extra boost as you head out trick-or-treating try protein plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving you'll have the energy to hit every house in the rich part of town where they give out the full-size candy bars and with factor you can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice they offset 100 percent of their delivery emissions and source 100 percent renewable electricity for their production sites and offices this october when you're down to the black licorice and raisins and ready for a real meal get factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh flavor-packed meals delivered straight to your door ready in just two minutes no prep no mess head to factormeals.com slash tangents 50 and use code tangents 50 to get 50 percent off that's tangents 50 at factormeals.com slash tangents 50 to get 50 percent off Welcome back, everybody. Sari, what are we going to do now? Yeah, so today we are going to play a slightly modified game of This or That, where the rules are simple. I will describe a kind of slimy thing or slime-related behavior, and you have to guess whether it's something that land creatures, sea creatures, or creatures in both biomes do. So land, Mm. sea, or both. And if you get a question right, you get a point slash candy. I have four rounds total. So we can, we'll keep the guesses snappy. So round one <laughs> is when some creatures are surprised or threatened, it's slime time. And it turns out that some of this defensive mucus can generate bright blue bioluminescence on its own rather than relying on glowing symbiotic bacteria. Scientists haven't figured out the exact biochemical reactions or light emitting proteins involved but it seems like an iron storing and releasing protein called ferritin is a key part of it. Uh, And ferritin is produced by most living things because regulating iron is important to life. But in this kind of slime, ferritin basically acts as a molecular battery because when iron is added to the mucus, a persistent blue light is generated. So is this blue glowing slime created on land, in the sea, or both? Sea, please. Yeah. I was also going to go sea. I am too. I never seen the guy walking around glowing blue on the land. <laughs> the things glow on the land sometimes. <laughs> Are you all locked in? And see yeah. Him? That's correct. Hey. Can I say why I answered so fast? Yeah. <laughs> because comb jellies do it when you jostle them in the seawater. Oh. oh. Interesting. So the it is it is a sea organism. The one that I was researching for this question um, was the marine parchment tube worm, which which also is very mucusy and and secretes a lot of things. Um, it constructs its tube out of mucus, and we studied its mucus. It glows blue, and it's like in the cells doesn't glow blue, but once it's shot out from its body and the the ferritin's doing its thing, it's blue. Huh. Very weird, but good, good, good. Uh, guessable questions are good. Okay, round two. <laughs> We're going to be tied this whole game. Some animal parents leave their young to fend for themselves, while others are super self-sacrificing, including letting their babies literally eat a slimy, fatty, mucus, or skin layer right off their backs until they're mm. able to forage on their own. This extra goo obviously provides nutrition to the babies, but it also helps prime their immune system and gut microbiome to get ready to survive as an adult. So is this eating your slimy parent behavior on land, in the sea, or both? I know I know who does this. Like, I made a SciShow yeah. episode about who does this. Yeah. Who I was just eats- watching oh. a TikTok I made about this. <laughs> oh, no. So and you can't I'm, remember? I'm, like, caught up. And yet, and yet, I'm still having a hard time answering the question. Because I don't uh, precisely know what Sari means by sea. I don't you know, have a core. Cool or do you mean or just water? Water. water. Yeah. yeah. I, water. Let's say water. I want to say both then. I'll say both then. I'll just say both then too. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are smart. (laughs) Um, You're all right. Do you want to guess? Okay. (laughs) What 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 they are? The Sicilian. The Sicilian. They're an amphibian. Ah, right. Yeah, I was like, this is giving big amphibian vibes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) 
So it is. So they, there is Sicilians. Sicilians um, feed like different develop- from Sicilians. Sicilians are human yeah. beings. Sicilians <laughs> are amphibians. Are amphibians? They're like they look kind of like a big worm. Kind of, they're limbless. Yeah. Li- ooh, limbless. They're- but also the discus fish, which is a type of cichlid. Um, mm. does mm. is is one of the only fish that demonstrates oh, this advanced hey. mode of parental care. So okay, okay. So there were there was it was both land and sea, and that there wasn't there was a fish. There was an ocean. There was an ocean one, but okay. I figured both both water. Yeah. But like Alexa said in her poem, fish have little mucus coats, and the discus fish mm. specifically bulks up its little mucus coat so that its baby fish can eat it. And then when they're, the babies grow up a little bit far more or grow up a little bit more, then they start swimming away faster from their babies. And they're like, no more. You can't eat oh. my mucus anymore. <laughs> you got to forge for yourself. <laughs> uh, which I think is very funny. They just decide yeah, at some point. That's the right call for sure. Uh-huh. Okay. Ready? For round three? Yeah. Sometimes bacteria assemble together into biofilms where the individual cells stick together thanks to a slimy extracellular structure. One type of biofilm called a snotite is especially goopy and weird. It has the consistency of snot, hence the name, Mm -hmm. and a pH of zero or one. So more acidic than stomach acid and similar to battery acid. And that's because the bacteria that make up snotites are extremophiles that metabolize sulfur compounds, including hydrogen sulfide. Mm. So are snotites found on land, in the sea, or both? I think that what we will discover is that they exist under the icy surface of Enceladus. And (laughs) we don't know that yet, but we're going to get there and we're going to be like, we found alien life! And it's it's like terribly toxic, acidic (laughs) snot. Everyone abandoned ship let's put, the, <laughs> put a cork in that hole we drilled and i'm sorry we shouldn't have looked <laughs> well space wasn't one of the options uh, <laughs> dang it <laughs> then i'll go with i'll go with c because i'm also c. i'm also gonna go with c there are a lot of like deep sea worms and stuff yeah. that can survive in similar down there situations too, yeah, yeah. I want to say land, just so you're not all tied the whole Ooh, time. Like, you know, gotta... Brave. Brave and Could correct. It is. Yeah, Sam. I feel like if it was in the water, it would be floating around too much. It, would, it needs to all be together. Yeah. It can't be floating around too much. I was thinking like Yellowstone National Park vibes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is kind of, yeah, like that, but just on on land in caves. Um, So they form on the walls and ceilings of hydrogen sulfide rich caves. Specifically, researchers studied um, a cave system in Italy where these snotites are hanging down from the like ceilings, kind of like stalagmites, but just they look like snot. I love that you can run into a snotite and it could like literally burn your skin. Burn your skin, yeah. right? <laughs> that feels like something out of like The Expanse totally, or The Twilight yes. Zone. Yes, oh my absolutely. god! Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, so mm-hmm. gross, scary. And they're mostly um, when they analyzed the bacteria, they were dominated. Like seventy percent of the cells, or more than that, was acido or acidothiobacillus thiooxidants. So you got the thio in there twice. They're super sulfur guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and just like live in these hostile environments, um, but in caves, which is very weird. I'm embarrassed that when you said what the pH balance was, Alexis and Hank both went, <gasps> and I was just like, <laughs> so pretend. But you yeah. still I got it, to. Sam. I but you yeah, still it got it. It's true. Okay, final round. Uh, Sam... Uh, pulled ahead a little bit with the with the snot knowledge. Okay. So during sexual reproduction, some creatures deposit way more than sperm in the reproductive tracts of their mates. Specifically, oh, yes. they excrete a gelatinous <laughs> mixture of fatty acids along with other things like hormones that forms a goopy physical mass called a mating plug or copulatory yep. plug. Researchers speculate that these slimy plugs could optimize sperm delivery and prevent any backflow. Uh, They could keep other males from adding their sperm to a vaginal pouch or canal or whatever, or provide important extra nutrients for reproduction. 
also are mating plugs created on land, in the sea, or both. That feels like a both to me. That feels like you would convergently uh, evolve toward right. mating plugs uh, <sighs> over and over again, honestly. I bet it's evolved mm. multiple times. That'd be my guess. I am leaning toward you know i'm just gonna say land maybe just to be contrarian but also i feel like that's not conducive to a water surrounded situation i was gonna say it sounds like something a fish would do see (laughs) 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 that sounds like something a fish would do so the answer alexis is right it's a land thing like the sea is too damp for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they're used by lots of species, Dang including it. several primates, uh, a lot of insects like bees, um, rodents, anyone who has like worked with like lab mice and, and mating lab mice, you see those little copulatory plugs. Um, the, one of the biggest ones in reptiles specifically are red sided garter snakes. So for <laughs> Halloween, you can look up a picture of that where the copulatory plug material <laughs> is. It's, it looks like, I don't even know how to describe it, like a chunk of ice, but a chunk of like slime goo is sticking out the side of the snake because it's like such a huge lump in there um, to really block uh, reproduction. Wow. And yeah. on the average, like larger male snakes deposit slightly larger plugs and, and whatnot. So lots of lots of land animals just sticking the goo. we got to write this book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I've got my facts. This is my audition for you once again. <laughs> Maybe Alexis can, can do plant sex too, mm-hmm. which I'm sure is also mm, very yeah. weird. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so our candy cut for the episode, no. Sam and Alexis have both come in with four total points, whereas Sari and I are under that number. Sari, though, didn't get a chance to get more. So, uh, <laughs> but it's not a well-designed game and no one cares, but we people care a little bit. We do have a trivia tiebreaker. Ooh. So this question is about hagfish again. Um, sometimes <laughs> hagfish get transported in trucks and sometimes those trucks tip over and spill the hagfish all over the road. Oh. In 2017, a truck transporting 13 containers of hagfish hit the brakes to avoid a construction zone and in the process spilled one of the containers of hagfish onto the road. Hagfish responded the way they do in any sort of scary situation. They released their slime all over cars surrounding the truck. So how many pounds of hagfish was that truck transported? Oh, this is the kind of thing I'm the very worst at, is knowing how much stuff weighs. Uh, one ton. How many? A thousand one pounds? Ton? Is that one ton? A thousand pounds of hagfish. The same I'm go. I'm going to guess... I'm trying to spatial sense this, but I don't know how much hagfish slime yeah. weighs, so this is yeah. not helping at all. Or how big a hagfish container is. Oh. Is yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to say two tons. It's 7,500 pounds. Alexis is the winner of the episode. Oh, Woo! wow. The queen of Halloween. <laughs> 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 This is, deserve it too. this is maybe the most productive hour ever in yeah. my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> so now it is time to ask the science couch for a guy a listener question for our couch of razor sharp. Spooky, spooky, tific minds is what it says on the show flow. Sam, what's the question? At Lauren R842 asks, what uses do slimes have for biocomputers? Mm. Biocomputers. Mm. I don't know. I know that slime molds do things that seem computery. Like mm-hmm. they figure they can like remember and it's weird. So like maybe that's that where we're headed. But I because I got nothing else <laughs> on this topic. And they like use them to like find there's that thing that I don't know if it's real or not, where they found like the fastest route to make like yeah. a hypothetical mm-hmm. train City. system or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had those slime molds that like made the little diagram that was really similar to the train system of Tokyo because right. it was also primed for maximum efficiency. And mm-hmm. I sometimes see TikToks about that. And then the TikTok says, and that's how we know that the universe has a brain. Oh, oh my God. God. That's oh. not the way. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's with those we... ones, oh, I'm like, oh, you have me, you have, and you lost me. Dang <laughs> <Yeah>. it. Ninety <laughs> percent there. Yeah. So, oh, so that is where my brain at first went to, like reading this question. So the specific slime mold that we study a lot, it's called Physarum polycephalum. Um, it's relatively well studied because it's uh, bright yellow. It's a plasmodial slime mold, which basically means <laughs> it's like one huge thing, like one huge cell, like goopy cytoplasm, which is the stuff inside the cell, surrounded by a big membrane and lots of s- small nuclei, rather than a bunch of individual cells that have clustered together. It can be microscopic. That cell can can shrink down really small if there's not very many nutrients. But when nutrients are abundant, like in lab conditions, when you're putting food like major mat- metropolitan areas in <laughs> in Japan, uh, <laughs> then it will expand outward and, and be visible by the human eye. They can do tasks that we traditionally associate with computing um, because they are responding to stimuli, um, solving mazes to reach a food source or that that model that you were talking about. But as far as we can, I can tell. Like that, that is maybe one chunk of, well, we could just get the slime mold to do math for us based on how it responds to the environment. But the other piece of it is their electrical properties. So any, anything alive kind of responds to um, electricity in some way and, and kind of relies on electricity in some way. Like the way our neurons in our bodies generate electrical signals to transmit information, create memory move our muscles, um, like, and any sort of thing that moves, even when you look at like Venus flytraps closing, then, then that has some electrical impulses related. There is this theorized and made a couple times electronic component called a memristor. It's a horrible name, a horrible portmanteau mm. of memory and resistor. And it's like a fancy resistor. So they they change their resistance based on how much voltage is applied, and they can kind of remember what the last resistance was when there's no more electricity happening. We've mostly understood them in relation to living things. So like our sweaty skin kind of acts like a memristor or slime molds um, when they connect two points in a circuit kind of act like a memristor rather than like a resistor. And so the, basically, sign, the, the point that we've gotten to is, what if we have a slime mold, this, this yellow P polycephalum slime mold, connect two electrodes and run a current through it? And it's like, well, it seems to behave like this electronic component that we haven't been able to create otherwise <laughs> with metals. So what if we... We use it in a broader computer situation, like, I, and I don't understand how computer chips work. So, but it's like, what if we use a biological component instead of a metal to create <laughs> this ah. complex electronic thing? I, I love that idea, but I, I have seen the expanse. And so I feel like <laughs> you shouldn't do it. And so I am fearful <laughs> of wetware. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, researchers actually did this. I don't think they were studying it as a memristor. Um, but in 2022, researchers, um, I think they're part of U Chicago, um, created a Tamagotchi-like watch that required you to keep a slime mold fed to create conductivity. Um, and so it like oh, kept, oh. it like I don't know, measured thing and kept time and whatnot. But in order to read your heart rate, you needed to like feed a little slime mold friend in your wrist so that oh. it connected two electrodes. Feed it um, one. I love that. Yeah. And and. <laughs> I think it was like more of like a a social science experiment of Mm -hmm. like, would people feel connected to their technology if in order for it to work, Uh, they had to feed a little guy mm. and how, like what feelings came up if the scientists told them you got to stop feeding it, like you got to starve your guy and your watch can't work as well. So then like interviewing the people. and then But he's just a little guy. guy. They felt guilty. They felt shameful um, by not taking care of their little guy. I know for sure that if I had to feed my phone, I would have, it would be worse for me. I would like <laughs> really. <laughs> That's wild and weird. Yeah. It's very weird that we uh, put electrons across rocks and then it <laughs> can do with phone stuff. And then we can talk <laughs> to each yeah. other and yeah. do a podcast. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's very weird. 
I love there, these electronic rocks. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there are some fancy rocks that we make these <laughs> days. If you want to ask the Science Couch your question, you can follow us on Twitter at SciShow Tangents, where we'll tweet out topics for upcoming episodes every week. Or you can join the SciShow Tangents Patreon and ask us on our Discord. Thank you to Giggling Geekette on Discord and at Insert Cool Pun on Twitter and everybody else who asked us your questions for this episode. Alexis Nicole Nelson, what are you up to these days and where can we see you and read things and tell, like buy stuff from you? <laughs> these days, I am looking forward to the plants going to sleep for the next few months so I can rest. <laughs> <laughs> we love rest. We love yeah. rest. Um, but if you want to see how I'm keeping myself busy during the colder months, you can find me on TikTok at Alexis Nicole. That's a Nicole with a K. Thanks, mom. Or you can find me on Instagram at Black Forager. Do you have a book? I am working on a book I literally turned in the manuscript yesterday. Okay. Oh, congratulations. Awesome. Thank Amazing. you. That is Thank huge. you. I'm so glad that we're doing a, a podcast today instead of the day where you were super stressed out about your deadline. <laughs> yeah. Same. When I when Sam, when you said it was going to be today, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be on cloud nine. <laughs> Let's go. That's oh, very exciting. Uh, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye out for that for sure. Uh, if you like the show and you want to help us out, it's so easy to do that. First, you can go to patreon.com slash scishowtangent, become a patron, get access to our newsletter and our bonus episode and our upcoming review of a Minions movie. Second, you can leave us a review wherever you listen. That's very helpful. And it helps us know what you like about the show. Finally, if you want to shoot a love for SciShow Tangents, just tell, tell people, people about, about us. us. Thank you for joining us. I've been Hank Green. I've been Sari Riley. I've been Sam Schultz. And I've been Alexis Nicole Nelson, that weird plant girl. SciShow Tangents is created by all of us and produced by Spooky Sam Schultz. Our associate producer is Eve Schmidt. Our editor is Seth Glitzman. Our story editor is Alex Billow. Our social media organizer is Julia Buzz Bazzio. Our editorial assistant is Timothy Chakravarty. The sound design is by Joseph Boo, not Edish. Our executive producers are Nicole Sweeney and me, Hank Green. And of course, we couldn't make any of this without our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. And remember, the mind is not a coffin to be filled, but the jack o to be lighted. But one more thing. <laughs> Baby birds often stay in the nests where they hatched for a few weeks, and it would be unsanitary for them to spend all this time in a mucky pool of excrement. So some species of baby birds produce slimy white fecal sacs, <laughs> kind of like a gusher or mochi or diaper, where the outside <laughs> is a mucous <laughs> membrane and the inside is poop. The parent yep. birds can easily grab these fecal sacs with their beaks and dispose of them to keep the nest clean. Or sometimes they eat these slimy blobs as a oh. snack, especially yeah. when they're in need of some extra nutrition. Nature, sometimes it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I found like a baby bird on the ground one time and it did this. And I was like, it's, I thought like it's like body was coming out of its butt, but it was, oh, oh, God. It was a poop sack. Poop to pop sack. It in its mom. To pop it in your mouth, Hank. Yeah, and then I had like a little bit of diaper mochi. <laughs> he, yeah. he made you a little treat. Uh huh. Yeah. Go, Dad. <laughs> I don't think I don't think he made it. Honestly, oh. Oh. <laughs> so I'm just guessing. I bet by now he's dead. <laughs> I love it. If, if this is any comfort at all, his average lifespan has since passed. <laughs> <laughs> everybody poops. Everybody dies. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the main two things. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>